The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A reading from the Holy Gospel. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke of, high, of him very highly and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself. And say, Do here in your native place the things we heard you had done in Capernaum. And he continued and said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to the widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built to hurl him dead on. But Jesus passed to the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're talking about our Jesus here. You heard that in the Holy Scriptures. They're talking about the guy we know, the Lord of our lives. They're talking about Jesus and the whole story that you know, born, of ne born in Bethlehem, of Mary and Joseph. They're talking about that little child who grew up now and comes back to his own, his home, his own hometown. In this scripture, it's not specifically said, but Jesus was educated. He could read. Not everyone in his day read. So the time of the private life of Jesus was busy. He was off being educated in the temple, the synagogue, I don't know, but he was being educated. He knew the scriptures, and he knew what his role was as a man in the local synagogue. Last week's selection from Luke, we heard Jesus speaking in the synagogue about the prophet Isaiah and he concludes even today, these words of this great prophet 
are fulfilled as you hear them. Jesus says then, oh, you're going to congratulate me. Local boy makes good. Some, some were amazed at his words. But others, not so much. My grandmother had a phrase, Giulesi Mangiloki. See, now you guys are mostly Slavic and other nationalities. See, I hope some, some of you are Italian and probably the Spanish understand the same thing. Jealousy eats people's eyes out. And some, I think, were jealous of the fact that this local homegrown boy, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph, son of Mary, carpenter, low class, could speak so eloquently. Not only that, but read their minds. Oh, sure, some of you are praising me, he's saying. But some of you are saying, okay, do here in your own town. Really prove to us how, how wonderful you are, Jesus. Do here in your own town the miracles you did in Capernaum and other places. Come on, live up to it. This is, this is your Jesus they're speaking about. This is our Lord. This is our dear Jesus, grown up, that they're speaking about and mocking and then they throw him out of the synagogue. Then they're going to bring him to the bow, brow of the, of the hill on which the synagogue was built, and their intention was to throw him down. Your Jesus and my Jesus. Your Lord, my Lord. And what does he do? I don't know how he did it. Surrounded by a group of raving people, he turns around and walks away and they look around for him. In some of the movies that we've seen of this topic, Jesus of Nazareth, all of the, all the movies, that scene is very interesting. Nobody does it the same way. Who knew how it happened? He wrapped himself up probably with his shawl and just walked away. And then his ministry continues. Here, right now, his ministry continues. Your Lord and my Lord was rejected and they were almost going to throw him over the brow of the city. Your Lord and my Lord, the Creator's Son, in the flesh, Jesus Christ, was rejected, was mocked, and was threatened. And that happens again today on our own streets, in our own town, in our own country. Because you're a different color, we can mock you. Because you speak with an accent, we can mock you. Because you're gay, we can mock you. Because you're a member of a minority community, we can mock you. Not so. Our Lord was there first. You think this scripture is a nice story about Jesus? This scripture is a story about us. This is a story about today. How when people are treated with ridicule and mockery and not appreciated for the talent or personality that they have or the background they have. That's our Lord who did it first. He was there. He experienced that spittle on his face someday when he carries the cross. He experienced the mockery. He experienced the sarcasm. He experienced the doubt. Your Lord and my Lord is experiencing that again today in our country, regrettably, throughout the world. It hasn't sunk in yet, has it? That we have the Word of God made flesh who made us his body and sent us into the world to bring the good news to all people. It hasn't sunk in yet, 100%, it seems. And we have good people still going against the system. I mean, do you absolutely love Pope Francis? And now he's going to the Mideast. And now he's going to, again, go to a country that forbids public demonstration of faith, but yet allows churches and Christian communities to exist. And most of those exist with the minorities that came from other countries to work there. And there he is, maybe a thousand in the country completely, maybe 10,000, I don't know the numbers, but there he is. 
And the world looks at him and says, look at this jerk. Who does he think he is going against the tides, going against what materialism in the world demands, going against the grain of society? Who does he think he is standing up for the poor, standing up against stupidity of global warming and global annihilation, standing up and say, we need to respect this earth of ours. We need to take care of the earth because you don't suffer. The poorest suffer. Who does he think he is? He might just be a follower of your Lord and my Lord, Jesus Christ. And a teacher while he's doing that, teaching us what we need to know as Christians. And God knows you. Make no bones about it. God knows every one of us. He reads our hearts. He knows our intentions. And he's waiting for us to act each day as we leave the church. You need, you need to know how to act? Well, let's go to St. Paul. Very efficiently, very eloquently in his letter to the Corinthians. He wasn't called from his birth as he thinks, but he was probably, as Jeremiah says in the first reading, that I was called from my birth to do what I got to do. God sent me out. I don't know how I deserved this, but God sent me. And you know what? We were sent. We were baptized and we were sent to do God's work on behalf of our Lord and our brother, Jesus. So you know we need a lesson, we need a guidance, we need a direction as to how to be Jesus in the world today. Jesus who is mocked, Jesus who is ridiculed, but Jesus who loves the minority, Jesus who loves the per people on the, on the periphery, Jesus who, Jesus who loves the marginalized. This is how Paul tells us, and do me a favor, substitute your own name. And listen to Paul's paraphrase, as he says, and I'll use the word I. I, as a Christian, am patient and kind. I am not jealous or pompous or inflated or rude. I do not seek my own interests. I am not ill-tempered. I don't brood over injury. I do not rejoice over wrongdoing. I rejoice over right and truth. And with God on my side, I bear all things, and I believe everything the Holy Scriptures have revealed to us, and I hope all things, and I endure all things, and because of my Lord with me, I will never fail. Well, Jesus failed. They were almost going to throw him off the city Hill? His life ended on the cross? What's Paul talking about? Jesus didn't fail. Jesus walked this earth to show you and me how to live it, how to bring dignity to this earth. And the ultimate spit in his face was the crucifixion, and God said, oh, no, 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 not my son. My son came to show the world until he returns in glory, the world, how to act. And Paul just reiterated it for us with love. Why? Because Jesus is love. Why? Because God is love. How? You decide, every one of us. How will I walk with my Jesus today? How will I stand next to the Jesus in the gutter, Jesus marginalized, Jesus spit upon, Jesus ignored? How will I live love today for my Jesus? <laughs> ¶¶